Uh, it is a pleasure to have uh, Chris Godbrough uh, with us. Uh, Chris is from, uh, from um, TotalView and uh, will present us the um, ways of debugging code written for multi-core chip architectures. Um, so you have 10, ten minutes, minutes in front yeah. of you. Thank okay. you, Chris. Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm the product manager for the TotalView uh, debugger and uh, MemoryScape, which I'll talk about in a few minutes here, uh, for TotalView Technologies, formerly Atnis. Some people may know us by that name. Um, I wanted to focus on uh, multi-core, uh, but at a kind of a, a, kind of a um, little bit of a broad level. I like to start uh, these talks by you know, sort of saying, what, what are we hearing people asking about? And it seems like a lot of the requests uh, and comments and questions we've had lately uh, course, uh, sort of correspond to three areas. Um, concurrency, uh, so multi-core, I think everyone probably already thinks sort of threads. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of the challenges that you get with threads are also very similar that you get with, a, with an MPI or a parallel or a uh, cluster type solution, so processes as well. And all of those things sort of, sort of um, point towards uh, scaling, whether it's 64 threads uh, uh, or 128 threads or whether it's 10,000 processes, you know, how do you scale? And when, when we, we total of you talk about scaling, you know, we'll have a slide here that talks about, um, you know, sort of performance, but there's also uh, how do you represent data? So total of you were in the, in the debugging tool space. So software developers are sitting down to try and, uh, and fix the problem with some sort of a parallel application or, or even a single threaded or a single process application. And they're, so they're doing lots of looking at, looking at what's going on inside the program. How do you represent it's hard enough to figure out how to represent a complex data structure on a single process in a single, you know, a single instance. Now, now think about, you know, the data that's being managed in a, in a hundred thousand process uh, job or a, or, a, or a thousand process job. How, you know, I think there's some real interesting uh, and challenging sort of scaling issues that, that that are even beyond the getting the data from one place to another. But you know, how do you represent it to the user? How do you give the user the kind of tools they need? A complexity. As you start talking about um, uh, concurrent programming, uh, you know, you start talking about, uh, you know, something that's not easy. I mean, ev everyone here knows that's why there's a big push, uh, the, the rocks talk earlier, uh, about, uh, you know, sort of having this all happen by magic behind the scenes. But for now, we're still doing a lot of this ourselves, uh, and it also almost always means more complicated, more sophisticated algorithms, um, you know, new technologies, uh, and, you uh, you know, the developers who have both the domain expertise that you're, you know, that maybe you're a, you know, talking about geophysicists or you're talking about uh, engineer, uh, you know, sort of electrical engineers, but then also understand concurrent programming. That's very rare. Uh, so that, so, they're, so they're, they're, they're a scarce, scarce breed. And even the people who are just really, really good at either one are, are scarce. So, um, you know, so the thing, sort of the things that we hear people talking about are how, to, how, to, how can they get, um, you know, the, their applications which are getting more and more complex uh, to work uh, well. And of course that, that sort of pushes on a need to test. You know, once you start assembling, I heard the, I heard the, the term com, you know, compo composing an application from different pieces this morning. I thought that was a good sort of phrase, good sort of resonant idea. Um, and that sort of comes also with collaboration. So as you have, you know, maybe scarce developer resources uh, and you're also trying to get, um, you know, large applications put together, how do, you, how do you help those people collaborate? So as a tools vendor, these are the kind of things that we're thinking a lot about. Uh, you know, this year. That's kind of what, what's on our mind uh, over at Total View Tech right now. Um, I think we've got, you know, a really good foundation in all, all of these areas, and I wanted to sort of go through the rest of the talk and just sort of highlight uh, some of those things. I, I, I wanted to make it customer focused. I'm bringing, I couldn't bring the customers with me. Uh, that would have been kind of fun, but 10 minutes is not long enough time for that. So uh, I wanted to start with some customer testimonials. Um, Bezerva is a company in, in Europe that does um, scale. I guess if you go into a European uh, um, market, almost always you know, the produce that you buy is, is weighed out on a Bezerva scale. Uh, and they actually, uh, I, was, I was visiting them uh, this last year, and they do a very highly sort of multi-threaded, sort of almost embedded uh, development model. Um, and they, they're using TotalView uh, and providing for them the ability to sort of attack and do, um, uh, and, and, and do their sort of multi-threaded Debugging. We're talking like hundreds of threads handling different things in sort of a real-time fashion with sensors and things like that. So what is uh, so TotalView? Um, probably most people here are aware of what TotalView is, but I sort of want to, in this context, sort of reiterate some of the major features. 
So Total View has support for you know, compiled languages, supports across a bunch of different platforms. Uh, Multi-threaded debugging and parallel debugging are really the heart and soul of Total View. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. Uh, we also have memory debugging in there uh, and a GUI, a very highly graphical and interactive GUI. So um, my, my sort of t title for the talk was about multi-threaded debugging, so I wanted to highlight a little bit the, you know, what is the key thing that if you're, if you're looking at writing a multi-threaded or a parallel application that makes Total View the vital tool, and that's really control over, you know, what, sort of what's going on inside your program. So when you're trying to track down a bug, like maybe a, a race condition, it's pain in, it, it's a very big pain if you're trying to run it over and over and over and over again, trying to hope that the race condition occurs. And one of the things that, you know, the sort of, the sort of thing that's sort of quantum, you know, qualitatively different about using Total View is you have a synchronous thread control. You can go in and drive the thread. So you have, I have, I think that maybe the race condition occurs because of this. You can go in and in a single session, you know, sort of step through that set of context switches and prove to yourself that that hypothesis was right or wrong. It allows you to sort of systematically deal with um, race conditions. What does that do? That allows your developers, um, or yourself if you're a developer, to, to really take on challenges, take on algorithms, take on um, uh, code uh, structures that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So we have a bunch of other sort of features that sort of uh, accentuate that, things like working with thread groups that are, that are very rare in the debugging world. Um, another cust customer testimony, and this sort of speaks to scalability. Uh, CEA is the European sort of equivalent of the national labs here. Uh, sorry, French, not European. Not, they, don't, they don't work with all the others. But yeah, they're over in Europe, in France, and they're the sort of equivalent of the national labs. And so they're working often uh, with very, very uh, high-scale systems. Uh, this slide was in here just to mention Total View runs across a wide range of different platforms, the Solaris, both on the AMD and also Spark and also Linux uh, and also some of those big HP, uh, HPC um, dedicated machines that were referred to earlier. Um, so the, for CEA and for the national labs here in the U.S., one of the things Total View has been, has been very successful over uh, a long period of time doing is sort of pushing up the envelope of scalability. So uh, we're currently... Uh, working with users who are developing uh, applications and are debugging on a routine basis multiple thousands of processes in a single debugging session. And our, our sort of customer requests start to go, you know, orders of magnitude beyond that. So, so tens of thousands and, and, and more. So this is something we've been done uh, well for a long time and we certainly continue to keep our eye on that ball. Um, I'm sort of running a little short on time here, but one of the things I wanted to emphasize, there's never enough time, um, is uh, a sort of strategy we have for going forward, um, and, and uh, how are we addressing some of those things like the uh, like the collaboration I talked about before? So the, the tool that we've had in the past, Total View, is, is you know just marvelous in the hands of someone who's very very experienced. One of the things that we've been trying to do, and we're, and we're and we're trying to do over the next couple of years, is really break out and develop. We think by developing sort of smaller tools which do single things well that we can develop tools that are easier for people to pick up and use. So we have things like uh, memory debugging, standalone memory debuggers, data-centric debugging, think, think D-trace, but you can work it at, the, at the user space level. Uh, so you can go in and look at how data is changing through your program. Uh, things like uh, active web tools and performance tools. Um, but we don't want to just have a smattering of different tools, none of which interoperate. We have a sort of a vision of a very highly collaborative um, sort of set of tools that sort of complement one another. I don't have time to really uh, give too much uh, justification to the workbench here. Uh, the last test testimony that I wanted to mention here is from a, a, a company that's doing um, uh, mo modeling of uh, fluid dynamics and, and uh, mechanical dynamics, um, that, that engineering uh, uh, type simulations we were talking about before. And what the thing that they're doing is they've actually uh, plugged one of those lightweight tools that I mentioned just a second ago into one of the sort of narrowly focused tools into their testing system. So they're using Total View. Um, and Total View Technologies to not just debug their really, really hard bugs, but also to verify um, on an ongoing basis that they're meeting certain quality goals. And that's kind of a neat uh, transition for us. The tool they're using is MemoryScape, and uh, come to the booth if you'd like to learn more about MemoryScape. I don't really have too much time to go through that here. But it's really focused on, um, uh, focused on doing one thing really well and making it really easy for a wider range of users to do. So... Uh, the last thing I wanted to, uh, the last slide that I wanted to leave everyone with is some sort of ideas for future uh, directions uh, that we're working on here at, at Total View. One of them is that workbench, uh, which I sort of skipped past, uh, which is a site for sort of putting all these uh, multiple tools into a single environment uh, and, and allowing them to sort of share data, share session information, and things like that. Uh, the Tau tools, um, we're sort of a multi-platform uh, 
uh, uh, tool vendor, so we need a, a performance tool which works across all the different environments. So we're, we've, we're working with the Tau guys. Um, a lot of people, I think, are familiar with those. Um, trace points is that tool that I mentioned earlier, the sort of idea of, um, I think for this audience I can say detrace, but for application level. So you can sort of see what's happening through your program uh, in a very nice sort of dynamic manner. Uh, and then reverse debugging, this is sort of a research pro topic we're working on. So allowing you to sort of, within a debugging session, not have to worry about going past debug. You can back up and see what happens. Um, visit us at our booth. Uh, we're in booth 124 in the, over in the expo next week. Uh, and you can sign up. These are all in the, what we call the early experience program uh, very soon. So you'll be able to sort of kick the tires and, and give us feedback really early on in the development process. So they're, they're all slated for 2008 kind of availability for, for GA. So any questions? Really short. How are we going to deal with transactional memory? Um, I believe that's, uh, well, at least from what I understood from the talk earlier, a lot of that's happening sort of at a lower level. The, to the least the, the tools I mentioned right now, Total View and MemoryScape, um, are, are more sort of user space. Um, but I think that is a really good question. So, uh, I, so I heard some, some loopholes like the ability to store outside of the transactions, and I can think that there could be some really interesting interactions there. So. Thank you very much, Chris. There you go.